In the case of the Crown versus Binky Badu, how so? Guilty or innocent? I find for the Crown, my lord, guilty. Mm -hmm. And how say you, Lord Bromwell? Guilty. Guilty. Young Master Badu, you have heard the decision of this court. Guilty as charged. Let this be a lesson not only to you, but to the youth of our fair nation. Yeah. Our youth must learn respect for authority yeah. and above all, Dignity. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let us forget about the dancing and the wild rock and roll music that has permeated the fabric of our very society. Yeah, 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 yeah. Court is adjourned. Take him away. Well, that's done. Mm. I say, how would you care to pop down to the club for a spot of brandy? Eh? Oh, well, I'd love to, would you? Yeah, I say, yeah, let's yeah, uh, be going yeah. down here. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Danny Kay. When there's a shine on your shoes, there's a melody in your heart. With the singable happy feeling, a wonderful way to start to face the world every day. With the dee doo dee doo doo dee doo dee the little melody that is making the worrying world go by when you walk down the street with a happy go lucky be you'll find a lot of what I'm repeating when there's a shine on your shoes there's a melody in your heart what a wonderful way to start the day Welcome to the show. We're very excited tonight to have with us two members of one of show business first families, Haley Mills and a famous actor father, John Mills. Now, John has starred in such wonderful films of Tunes of Glory, Swiss Family Robinson, Around the World in 80 Days, and with his lovely daughter, Haley, in the Chalk Garden. Now, Haley has charmed us all in Pollyanna, The Parent Trap, and Tiger Bay. 
and they've come over from London, and this is their very first appearance together on American television. We've had an absolutely sensational week working together, and right now, I'd like to join Haley and show you what happens when a father with a teenage daughter has to face the truth. The awful moment when he realizes that his little girl is no longer a baby. Daddy? What? Oh. You busy, Daddy? No, I'm not, Daddy. Homework. Oh, well, darling, you came to the right man. I'm an absolute Liz with homework. Now, tell me. <laughs> oh, Daddy, why? Janie, take nice. off the fraternity pin. But I you... said, take off the pin. All right, Daddy. Won't come off. It's off now. Well, Tommy was coming over to take me to the basketball game. I'll call him to tell him to forget it. Why? Well, I, I, uh, I don't think you should disappoint the young man. I mean, he did buy the tickets. Thank you. You're welcome. But I will tell Tommy we won't make the trip to the aquarium tomorrow. Well, well, well there's nothing wrong with the aquarium, dear. I mean, I've, I've always encouraged my children to love fish. <laughs> well, what about Saturday? Well, well, what's Saturday? Tommy and I were going bowling. Oh, well, sports are nice. What, what's that you've got in your hand? Tommy's fraternity pin. Well, just don't hold it in your hand like that. You're liable to stick yourself. Why don't you, uh... uh Pin it on your dress or something. You're a of me, Papa. I love you, too. J Janie? Yes, Daddy? Now, now, remember, you're not going steady. Of course not, Daddy. Well, all you have to do is have a firm hand with your kids. Is that something? <laughs> There's a meeting here tonight. I can tell by your friendly face. There's a meeting here tonight. There's a meeting here tonight. I wonder what's going on here tonight. I can tell by your friendly face. There's a meeting here tonight. There's a meeting here tonight. Have you been listening to the radio or you're a record collector? You're bound to know this sound. To us, it's the old familiar sound of old friends returning home. This is Joe, and this is Eddie. And this. And this is one of the most exciting sounds in music today. Ladies and gentlemen, Joe and Eddie. Farewell, my honey, Cindy Jane. Well, goodbye, my sweetheart, Cindy Jane. Farewell and goodbye, Lord, I'm on the morning train. Your mean mistreating drumming near and say, Honey, won't you ease my troubled mind? Yeah. Honey, won't you ease my troubled mind? Have you got a reason for treating me unkind? Honey, won't you ease my troubled mind? Tell me why you do the way you do, yeah, girl. Tell me why you do the things you do. Well, I know you've been untrue, Lord, so now I'm leaving you. You two time once too often, now we're through. Yeah, Lord, now. From now on, chilly winds are 
telling me it's time to travel on. Who'll be your baby when I'm gone? Farewell, my honey, Cindy J. Goodbye, my sweetheart, Cindy J. Farewell and goodbye, Lord. I'm on the morning train again, so you'll be mistreating on me near and say. A farewell and goodbye, Lord. I'm on the morning train with you to your meanest street and draw me near and say, Farewell and goodbye, Lord. I'm on the morning train. Your meanest street and draw me near and Distinguished actor are bandied about a lot these days, but tonight I unhesitatingly use that phrase to describe my dear, dear friend, Johnny Mills. John? Uh, well, welcome to my uh, habitat for a change. Welcome to California, John. Well, it's a great pleasure to be here, Danny. Well, we've had some great times in England, haven't we? Yes, we, uh, we certainly did. You know, I can't get over Haley. Mm -hmm. Well, when I knew her, she was, what, she was three or four or something yes, like she that? Yes, she She's was, a big girl. Yes, yeah, she was <laughs> tiny, tiny. Now, how are you enjoying your stay? Oh, we're having a wonderful time. Are you marvelous? Mm, marvelous. We always do. Well, how's Haley enjoying it? Haley? Well, uh, she's, uh, she's having a great time. Is she? Yes. Well, I'm uh, glad to hear that. As a matter of fact, you know, she's met a very, uh, very nice young man. Oh, really? From, from, An American? From, uh, yes, from college. He's oh. from, uh, from Akla. <laughs> From where? Akla. Oh, he means UCLA. <laughs> See, John travels a good deal, and he, and he told me a story. Danny, and no, it, not that one, is it? Which one? Well, the one you can't tell that. No, 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 the one that you told me that Mary oh, told oh, you. Oh, the one that Mary. Yeah, that's all right. Yeah. It, uh, it was an incident he witnessed at the French customs office, yes. and it kind of suggested a sketch to us. So tonight, with Haley's help, what we'd like to do is to do this sketch for you. Now, John, suppose you set up the scene while I slip into my French accent. Right. Yes. Good. There is no one more conscientious than a customs inspector. Put a uniform on his back and a rubber stamp in his hand, and he becomes a rock of Gibraltar, bearing on his shoulders the full responsibility for the survival of the Republic. Now, let's join just such a gentleman at customs in the Orly Airport, Paris. <laughs> That's it, madame. You are all stamped and uh, ready to go. Thank Young you very man, much. Young man, you have kept me here for the past half hour. Hmm? This is outlandish. Madame, it is my duty to see that nothing comes into this country without approval. Well, I've never been so humiliated. Madame, madame, just one moment, please. I have to examine your papier bag. But, oh, for heaven's sakes, that's only my lunch. Madame. Do you realize that you could be smeggling a diamond sandwich? <laughs> we have to examine everything, madame, and we will be just one minute. We have here a little something. We have two slices of bread, one piece of lean beef. <laughs> bon appétit and bon voyage. We hope you have a pleasant time here in France. Oh. <laughs> Next. Oh, bonjour. Mademoiselle, what uh, do you have uh, anything to uh, uh, declare? Only that you are one of the most attractive men I've ever met in my life. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you want to check my luggage? Mm. I may be a smuggler. You are, madame. You have smuggled my art. But in this country, it is tax free. <laughs> Very kind, monsieur. Uh, 
Would you care to join me for a cocktail before my plane leaves? Je le verrons ce temps, je suis enchanté. Je le verrons ce temps, c'est le parler cocktail. Et je le verrons ce temps, c'est le parler cocktail. Je le verrons tous souhaiter les éteurs, on te tuer, on te soir. Je le verrons tous sur les poires, on te beurre. What does that mean? That means... I'll be waiting. Don't be late. No, I will not be late. Oh, don't, don't, don't go far away, because as soon as the people uh, come through, I will check them very rapidly, and I will meet you for the cocktail. <laughs> hey, please, here we are. Thank you. Anything to declare? Very nice. <laughs> very good. Next. Yes, fine. All right, Frenchie. I got a pocket full of rubies, a half a mile of pearls, a handful of diamond rings, and a rent rent rolled up in my pants. I say, my mother gave them to me for my birthday. What do you say? Don't go away, I will be with you in just one minute. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Bum, choo, up. Thank you. That's well, that's it for the day. I'm coming, Cherie. We are all finished for the day, and we will go to have our little cocktail, and we will go together. Hello, I say, um, would you, uh, would you be the, um, sort of customs chappy? Well, I'm sorry, but France is closed for the night. <laughs> I am coming, Cherie, you don't uh, go away. But I say, old uh, Trout, I, I really simply, I must be checked through, you know. It's oh. very, very important. Well, for heaven's sake, open your bag, and I will see right. what you have. Very good. Very That's fine. Oh, fine, thank you very much. Oh. Goodbye. <laughs> well, we... um, yes, just a moment, excuse me, there's still my daughter, you know. Your daughter? Yes. Oh, I suppose she is a teenager with a big trunk yes. and has bought everything in Europe. Huh? <laughs> yes, and right, yes, yes, <laughs> yes. I get, I get her. Listen to me for one moment. Yeah. You play? I will give you one thousand francs to leave the country. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> You see, I have a lady waiting for me. <laughs> and, and, and if you will open the trunk, you will be on your way, I will be on my way, and we will have a wonderful time. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> of course, uh, I quite understand. Yeah, okay. People are sport, eh? People are sport. No, no, my dear. No, no, no. I gave you the key the at the, uh, the soccer the match. I'm absolutely certain. I gave you no, the soccer yeah. match. I, I remember distinctly where, giving the, it to you in Czechoslovakia, dear. Will you open the trunk, Chicken please? Yeah. Yeah. Would, would, would no, you no, the, the, wait a minute, wait yeah. a minute. Don't I remember this I, I remember oh, where I put the key you, now. Oh, oh, it is in yeah. my little tweed money belt. Tweed money oh, belt. Where's the money belt? <laughs> In the trunk. Well, I know that. Hey, hey, don't go away, dear. Wait I will see you in just I've a minute. Just Hold my hat. I'll be right there. Please. Good gracious. I've been an absolute fool, sir. Well, what, 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 what? I've got a spare key here. A spare here. key, isn't it? Wonderful. We have a spare key. It's this a little, little chubby one here. The, the, the big key? It's long, say no, 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 it's one that's chubby. This is small. Open the trunk. I think it's the one, my dear. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. It's up here somewhere. Somewhere. I'm sorry. I can't wait any longer. I'm leaving. I'm an eccentric millionaires. And it could have been such fun. country a very long time. <laughs> Take 
my sugar to tea. All the boys are jealous of me. Because I never take a where the gang goes when I take my sugar to tea. She's a lovely little baby, that's she That's why I never take her where the gang goes When I take my sugar to tea Every Sunday afternoon We forget about our hair Robbing elbows after it's With all the millionaires I'm a dandy when I take my sugar candy For a spot of tea I'm just about as jazzy as yes, it can, can be Cause I never take a wealth the gang goes When I take my sugar to tea When I take Miss Haley to tea All the girls are jealous of me Why, I remember when she was not even three I'd visit her folks and she'd sit on my knee Now we're taking Miss Haley to tea I'm a four alarmer, that's me She's a teenage charmer, that's she I remember when they would stop and he'd say It's long past your bedroom, not toddle away Now we're taking Miss Haley to tea Seems like only yesterday She was in her kiddie car Haley's comet has grown up into a full-fledged star. It's delightful. I'm just as proud as, as any me. man could be. Take it sweet. Whenever sugar takes a stroll with me, and we never venture where the gang goes. And when I take my sugar to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Violets are blue, we're not the Beatles, but we love you. Have a banana. Use a banana. You mean a banana? and his inhuman ways. Short rations, endless beatings. Off the men down with scurvy and him driving us on like we was animals. Before this day is through, we'll tend to him. And that'll be the end of Captain Blech. <laughs> the end indeed, uh, gentlemen. Tim, it's Captain Blech. <laughs> do my ears deceive me, or do I detect certain signs of displeasure with my command? Hmm? Come, come. Speak up, gentlemen. I was under the impression that I was treating you rather handsomely. A fine ship, three square meals a month, <laughs> and for entertainment of flogging every night, with matinees every Wednesday and Saturday. <laughs> now, what... Are uh, your complaints, gentlemen? Well, begging your pardon, Captain, but the men haven't had any fresh fruit in over six months. Boy! Yeah. You dare say that to me, sir? Hmm. You with a banana in your hand. <laughs> banana, sir? Well, well, this ain't no banana. This here is a belaying pin made of solid mahogany, sir. That is a banana. Is it? 
But sir, eat your banana. That's <laughs> 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 uh, been hard in the middle, but not bad at all. <laughs> we know there's fresh fruit aboard, Captain Yeah. We saw it at your dinner table. Now listen to me. You sniveling, seamy band of cutthroats. I live better than you. I dress better than you. And I am better than you. And do you know why? Because I am your captain and an incredible snob. <laughs> now you're all under arrest. What for, sir? For eating bananas on deck. <laughs> my first mate will carry out my orders. Mr. Sebastian, come down here. Mr. Sebastian, come down, I say. <laughs> you screamed, Captain. <laughs> Mr. Sebastian, come down here. is a fun navy, isn't it? <laughs> Mr. Sebastian, what kept you so long? Well, I don't know, sir. Might have been that I was rinsing out a few doilies, you see. He, 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 he. Yes! <laughs> Mr. Sebastian. Uh -huh. Mr. Sebastian! Oh, please don't shout, sir. You're melting my beauty, Ma. Sebastian, <laughs> <laughs> the seeds of discontent seem to be sprouting among the men. Oh. We'll have to make an example of this one. Their ringleader. Well, I, I, sir, or whatever one says on board ship. <laughs> I want you to give him 20 lashes. 20 lashes, sir? I say, isn't that rather a bit severe, sir? Mr. Sebastian! Oh, you're <laughs> shouting again, sir. I mean, after all, how much emotional roughage can one take? <laughs> Give him 20 lashes. Very well, sir. 20 lashes. <laughs> Heavens, I should have had a bald eye. <laughs> Do as I say. Take this scoundrel and whip him. I'm afraid I can't do that, Captain Bier. <laughs> do you realize what you're saying? Do you have any idea what this means? Well, I know perfectly well what it means, sir. And I am prepared to suffer the consequences. <laughs> uh, you realize, of course, that to disobey me is tantamount to treason. Hardly the actions of an officer of the Royal Navy. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot live except by the dictates of my own conscience, sir. The welfare and the happiness of my men is far more important to me than the cold and heartless rules and regulations. I will not tolerate softness and misplaced sympathy in my men. And I inspect unswerving obedience from my officers. For two years now, I have watched Passip. <laughs> For two years, sir, I have watched passively while you have committed one brutal act upon another, mistreating the men, humiliating them, until these men lost whatever little dignity they had. Well, sir, I shall not stand by any longer. I mean to see that justice is done. My patience, sir, is at an end. <laughs> Mrs. Sebastian, I'm giving you just one more chance to obey my order. <laughs> <laughs> Good 
good heavens. And my answer, I'm afraid, is still the same, sir. I, I I I I I you under arrest. Seize him! Did you hear me, you black arts? Seize him! I'm taking command of this vessel, Captain. What? Turn in your temper. You are through. <laughs> this is mutiny! Call it what you will, Captain Bief. <laughs> your days of brutality are over. And I'm changing the name of this boat from the HMS Cruelty to the good ship Lollipop. <laughs> you will hang from the from, hang from the highest guard arm for this. Pirates are attacking off the starboard bow. Pirates? Release the captain. What? We have a common enemy now. I never forget that we all are Englishmen. All right, men. All right. Heave to port. Heave to port. All hands on deck. All hands on deck. All hands aloft. All hands aloft. Battle station. Battle station. Don't repeat me. Don't repeat me. Man the stop. Man the stop. Sir, the yes. powder is wet. Our cannons won't fire. The powder is wet. Wet. Good grief. We're in for a spot of trouble now. They'll blow us out of the water. Unless, sir... We blow them out of the water <laughs> first. But how can we, man? How can we? Our powder is wet. Sir, point me toward the rascals, and I shall sneeze them to kingdom come. <laughs> it's an old trick, but it might just work. <laughs> Hold on, sir! Oh, there you are. <laughs> Prepare Mr. Sebastian for firing. Eyes up! Both pencils up! By the numbers! One, two, three. Oh, <laughs> set him. Set him at two degrees. Eleven minutes left. Two degrees, eleven minutes left, sir. Uh, 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 five degrees right. Five degrees right, sir. Range, two hundred yards. Range, two hundred yards. Load. Load. Uh, prepare to fire. <laughs> fire! Ah, <laughs> Sebastian, one day your nose will hang in the British Museum. <laughs> say I certainly enjoy that sketch. I, I wouldn't have had anything happen <laughs> for the rest of the whole time that John and I were working because what I, I think my own shirt is attached to this one. I'm, I'm, oh no, that's true. Isn't this nice? Oh, I've had a marvelous time working with John and Haley. It's, it's really true that I've known Haley since she was a tiny little girl. And Mary Mills and John and Haley were having a bite of lunch the other day. And I remember being at the Wick, that's their house in England, and Haley was a little tiny girl. And uh, I must say, in all fairness, I, I, I love England and I love the British people, but uh, I wouldn't write any letters home about their weather. <laughs> we had blazing hot sun from 12.15 to 12.17 one day. <laughs> And I used to go around with one of those little reflectors, you know, so you could get the sun for about two minutes sitting in the backyard like that. And I was doing this, and Haley saw me one day. She ran running back to her pants, and she said, that crazy American thinks his head is on a plate. <laughs> and the other story that Mary told me just, just before we did the show, uh, Haley was about five, I think, or six. 
And uh, Mary writes, and she was working at night, and Haley got up in the middle of the night, about 2 o'clock, and she came downstairs. She said, I've got to see Mother. And John was sitting back there, and he said, no, you can't see your mother now. She, you're going to interrupt her. She's writing. She's very busy, and leave her alone. And she said, but, Daddy, I simply have to see Mummy. And John said, but you can't. She said, I must. My heart stopped. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to let John Mills tell me any more stories about Haley. That I'm going to... uh, you know, Haley really is making such enormous progress and such great strides in the motion picture industry. <clears throat> she has made a number of very, very successful pictures, and even at her tender age, she's begun to have experiences that will probably stand her in very good stead as she grows older. She was telling me an accident that she had with one of the animals that was in a picture with her. I said, Haley, as you go on, you will remember that all actors who work with animals at one time or another have a disastrous experience. And I told her a story that happened to me when I was making a picture called The Kid from Brooklyn. Now, it was a very nice picture, and in the scene, I remember I had to do a, a, a scene with a lion. Well, now I'm a city boy. <laughs> And I don't know much about animals. Oh, I like animals or not, but, you know, I don't go around playing with lions during the day. <laughs> see? And uh, I said, well, Mr. Goldman, uh, I, I don't think I really ought to play the scene because I'm not really terribly comfortable with lions. And he said, well, Danny, don't be silly. This lion is a pussycat. <laughs> I said, really? He said, oh, yes, it's played with little babies, and, you know, the lion does exactly what you tell it, so really there's nothing to be concerned about. So after some persuasion, he uh, finally talked me into doing the scene with the lion, uh, threatened to cancel the contract, but no, it wasn't that really so much. It was just that uh, he thought it would be good for my career. <clears throat> well, I arrived the day we were supposed to shoot this scene, and there was a large hotel lobby. And I was standing talking to a gentleman and suddenly I felt something rub up against my leg. And I looked down and there was a lion. I don't mean behind a cage. There was a lion looking up at me and I looked down at it and it went <laughs> just the way I felt when he went, wow, like that. And I didn't move very fast. And finally, the trainer came over and said, here, Jackie, or whatever the lion's name was, and the lion moved away. Now, they proceeded to rehearse the lion. Now, the scene was that I had to walk in with the lion on a leash. And I had to walk up to a, a desk in the hotel lobby and ring the bell, and the lion had to put his paw up on the desk. So now the trainer, who was armed with a gun, a chair, a whip, kept saying, all right, Jackie, and the lion went, Row! and he went, pow, pow, he shot the lion. Then he hit him with the whip, and then he held the chair out. Now, they rehearsed for four hours, and the lion did nothing right, absolutely nothing. And finally, the trainer said to me, well, we're ready. <laughs> I said, well, maybe the lion is ready, but I am not. <clears throat> I walked off. Oh, by the way, all the, the crew were way up in the flies, about 60 feet up in the air, see? All the brave souls. I was the only one on, on the set, supposedly, with the lion. And I walked into my dressing room. And there was a gentleman came to see me with the Golden Organization. He said, I understand you're having a little trouble with the lion. And I said, uh, yes. And he said, well, what seems to be the trouble? He says, well, now, Dan, are you afraid of the lion? I said, yes. <laughs> he says, well, why don't we get a big dog and make it look like a lion? I said, I don't care if you got a chihuahua. <laughs> I am not going to play that scene with the lion because I frankly was terrified. Now, do you know that we did the whole scene and everything worked out fine and it was never in the picture? <laughs> there you are.
From now on, when I make movies and I do scenes with animals, I'm going to get a written guarantee that we have, uh, that it's going to be in the picture. Now, before, I, I, I've got to tell you about a pinnacle of my career in the last month or so. Some weeks ago, I became a group singer. And I really was absolutely crazy about the fact that I had to go to a hospital and have my vibrato removed because Earl Brown was screaming about my vibrato. And I think you're supposed to be in now, kids. Is that right? Yeah, huh? Oh, yeah, come on. Paul, are you ready? All right, you ready to go? Now, we sang it real good in rehearsal. Now, we're going to do it again? Okay. There's about time now? Oh, yes. <laughs> I, I heard you out here, Bobby. <laughs> it ladies and gentlemen our thanks to Joe and Eddie for their song and to John and Haley Mills for the fun they helped us have now we hope they can all come back very very soon our thanks also to Harvey Corman Bernie Capel Aaron O'Brien and Morty Prickett a couple of weeks ago at the close of the show we reviewed some of the parting words we left with you down through the season and we suggested that you make a sentence out of them well the words were if you remember wombat vestibule, rutabaga, flange, ratchet, and syzygy. <laughs> now, I'd like, I'd like to quote my favorite sentence of the many that were sent in. The wombat flew out of the vestibule, had a bite of rutabaga, took a nap on the flange, climbed on the ratchet, and went into a syzygy. <laughs> <laughs> now, this week, why don't you try setting that thought to music? Good night. <laughs> this is Vern Bennett speaking. <laughs>